of people. <laughs> That's good. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, nice to have you here again for this um, last digital session. Uh, I hope uh, you all had a good session today, the physical session. And I think we're going to jump uh, directly in uh, to a bit of a summary of um, of today's uh, session. So hopefully we have Bjorn Kristiansen and Magnus Evenby together with us. If you can put on your uh, camera. And, we are uh, trying off first with the microphone and then... Everything's fine. <laughs> oh. oh. One blurry and one chart. <laughs> yeah. You can take oh. take away the blurry. Here he comes. Hello. Perfect. Hello. I think uh, we'll have a summary from um, today's session, and um, hopefully, uh, after you have done that, uh, we can uh, have some comments uh, or thoughts from the other coaches or athletes on uh, the physical sessions during the whole week. If uh, if it was good, if it, something can be better, or um, yeah, any thoughts, you can write it in the chat if you are possible. So, Björn and Magnus, take us through. Yeah, uh, as as for today's, then was an uh, interval session with uh, different uh, different different levels of um, of intensity, with uh, six minutes going uh, at the medium pace. Four minutes slightly harder and uh, 20 seconds with uh, all out. It's it's a typical uh, close to season and in season interval. So uh, yeah, this time of year it's it's normal to go a little bit harder with the intervals and uh, and and to build up an interval like this. It um, it uh, definitely uh, makes makes the um, Turbo uh, going to work uh, after a couple of uh, more sessions uh, like this. Um, what to say? We have shared uh, throughout these days uh, intervals uh, with um, with the sprints. We have shared the uh, intervals as for today's and uh, and the basic strength. So I just just hope that um, that uh, those small drips of um, drops of uh, of training have given you some ideas of what to do. And um, if you have uh, any thoughts uh, how it worked, um, then feel free to ask. Do you have something, Magnus? No. Oh, uh... All these uh, sessions, we have used them a lot, uh, and they will work very well for us and our group. And uh, yeah, that's why we, we wanted to share them with uh, the rest. So hopefully they uh, got some new ideas and uh, yeah, a little inspiration in uh, in their daily training. Thank you. So, any coaches, athletes, do you have any thoughts for uh, the physical sessions we have uh, been through? Did you learn something new? Hopefully, they did. <laughs> we can um, we can come back and uh, for sure you can write it down in the chat during the whole session. So, um, and I think we're gonna say thank you to. Um, to Magnus and uh, Björn so far, and thank you for uh, good sessions uh, during the uh, during the week. And we're gonna move uh, further in the program to the um, headline for today, and we are back with session with a star, the third one. And uh, today's topic is. Uh, Top athletes life, and uh, we start today's session with the former Nordic combined star Mikko Koxlin with the seven uh, seven victories in the World Cup and five medals in the World Championship. He's one of the best in the Nordic combined history, and we have also 
Christian Westmeyer Ribera, who ended up in a second place in the overall World Cup last season, who together with his coach Leandro Ribela is here to tell you about his life as a top athlete. But I think we're going to start with uh, Miko. I see you already. If you un unmute yourself, then it's going to be perfect. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I was starting to say I've been ready the whole day, actually from 4.30. My youngest son woke me up. So uh, I had a long day. I really look forward to this uh, talk. Uh, thank you, Jan Christian. It was a good introduction and maybe a bit overkill on the best in the history. But um, yeah, I, uh, I have uh, had a, a good career that um, today I'm proud of. So thanks. Uh, today I will have um, um, a talk about my reflections over my own career. Um, I will talk about um, yeah, reaching your potentials in uh, sports because um, for me that is what it's um, basically about. Um, I think a career is um, about reaching the, the top level, level of, um, of yourself. Um, so that's uh, the baseline uh, of what I'm going to talk about today. And I have also some thoughts about what was important for me in my career. Um, and uh, I can, um, yeah, uh, before I start, uh, I think um, as I've understood, there is a lot of uh, people from all around the world, which maybe uh, don't, uh, know uh, what the Nordic Combined is. Um, so I will give you uh, a smart, small, um, small video, show you a video uh, of um, two of my uh, um, proudest moments uh, if you look at the results um, in my career. So um, I, uh, I hope I get this right. Uh, Jan Christian, can we, uh, do you see a uh, a video now? Yeah, I see yeah. the video and if you make it full screen, it's perfect, I think. Yeah. So, here we go. And we have Mikko Koksli again from Sørehold. His father is Ola Koksli, the first leader. His mother is from Lakhti. And he had 119,5 meters in the try. And the situation is not so bad. Og Kokslien, ja, glimrer å hoppe av Kokslien. Har vi fått fram en ny kombinerstjerne nå? Han var jo nummer to og nummer ni i Kosamo. Og kommer langt ned i bakken, 130 meter. Og tre ganger ratten, og dette er et vidunderlig utgangspunkt for Kokslien. Ja, det er bra. Han gjennomfører et ordentlig hopp, synes jeg. Og får litt av trekk imot, det gjør han, men det er så lite at... Det skulle bare mangle, og så gjør det et godt utgangspunkt for Rennet. Det er litt glimrende. Inn og Edelman. Han svarer på dette, Mikko Kostlin. Dobbelans hele veien. Bare vi skal se hvordan Tisbjørn flyr. Det er enormt å trøkke til med det. Kokslin har kontakt. Da er det på Moas. Det må komme av. Kokslin i stor fart og opp på siden. I denne 100 meter igjen går for seg i bøyene med Malmo. Mikko Kokslin har kjent med fart. Han har teknikken. Han har tjenet. 30 meter. Dette målet går av igjen for Mikko Kokslin hjemme på Lillehammer. Vinner Mikko. Herlig. Okay, so <laughs> uh, then you know the uh, basics of Nordic Combine, it's a ski jumping and cross country. Um, a small reason besides me wanting to brag about my own career was also this was um, uh, the the last victory I had in uh, 2014 is from the same stadium as um, the Para World Ski Championship is going to be held here in uh, Lillehammer. So there you got the glimpse of the of the stadium. Um, yeah, um, I will now start a small presentation um, so you can follow 
this young Christian give me a heads up if it's um, if it's coming to life. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, young Christian mentioned also I have um, I had a I had a, have I have had a good career. I have seven World Cup victories. Um, I have some medals from World Championships and um, some Norwegian Championships. Uh, today I work uh, with Olympia Toppen in Lande, which is um, a section of uh, top sports in the Norwegian Sport Federation. Um, and I am based here in the region around Lillehammer. I have talent uh, development as my main field uh, of work um, and also a part of my job is uh, working with uh, para-athletes. So I feel like I learn new things um, every day and I'm uh, getting really, um, yeah, um, I'm learning the para-sport to know more and more each day and it gives me a lot to be able to work with uh, the great athletes that uh, lives in this area. Um, and, uh, we have now some skiers here. We have some um, hockey players that is um, is based here in Lillehammer and also different areas around um, around Lillehammer. So it has been definitely definitely uh, um, enjoyable. Um, enjoyable for me to start working with para athletes. But today I will uh, not talk about para sport. Uh, I will talk about uh, my um, my career and my thoughts about uh, my career, which for sure para sport and conventional sport is the, pretty much the same. At least that's how I look at it. And I think there is, um, yeah, I, I, I hope that um, both you coaches maybe around the world and also athletes can um, can take a, a tip or two uh, from uh, what I will talk about today. Um, the first thing I want um, uh, I, want, I want, will actually ask you uh, to take now uh, one minute to think about uh, two or three in factors, uh, important factors. Uh, for your success in sport. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I will today talk a little bit about my own um, uh, factors that I found important for my career. So I will now, uh, yeah, I will uh, let you think for a, a minute. Um, try and think about uh, for you to become successful in sports or in life in general like for you to have for you to reach your potential in sports what uh, what factors is important for you I see there have been something into the chat. Is it okay, Miko, that they write yeah, down? Yeah, perfect, the chat? perfect. Yeah. Just write down in the chat if you feel comfortable and want to, to share. And I guess there is no one final answer, Miko. So feel free to uh, write it down what's uh, on yeah, your mind. There is no wrong answers to this. Uh, it's just I want uh, everybody to make a small reflection about um, what they feel. But there has come, come a lot of good suggestions already. So. Good. Um, I will just um, also as um, a lead up to what I will talk about. Um, 
what you saw uh, in those uh, videos was um, two of my victories. Uh, I had 160 starts. So if you count the uh, victories, it's under 5% of the competitions. So there's a lot of adversity and hard periods in sports. Um, so that's also a little bit about what I will talk about today is that um, for sure you, you reach a lot of, uh, of hard periods or you, you meet a lot of hard periods and what will be what was important for me to actually, yeah, having motivation to do uh, the sport until I was 34. Um, but there is uh, really good answers there. Uh, motivation comes up, tough mentality. Dedication, uh, excellence, pleasure, happiness, overall balance, constant motivation. So um, I will um, go to the next. Um, my, um, yeah, um, I think when people ask me what was the most important thing for uh, your career, um, I say, patience and a long-term view. Um, I would say I had a long-term view since I was a kid. I had a dream goal of becoming the world best uh, Nordic combined skier. I actually made the decision or made the decision, but I was, I was skiing from a very young age. I started um, when I was, I have movies from, or movies from when I was under three years old, jumping in small homemade ski jumps. Um, but I actually have a, a newspaper article from when I was 11 that I am reaching for the top in Nordic combined. Um, but uh, what was important with that dream was that um, I had a patience with that dream. Um, and I think if you have the patience with that dream, um, it will um, push you onwards. Um, but as I mentioned also uh, earlier, I had a lot of um, or downswings in my career. And I think many of, um, of the, also the best athletes have a lot of uh, harder periods um, in, in their uh, career in sports. I was basically what you can call a child star. Um, but uh, when I then met adversity and lack of success from when I was maybe 15, 16, mm, that dream goal kicked in. Uh, I knew where I wanted to go. And I also kept um, on having that long-term view and patience in my career. Um, and I think without that patience and long-term view, I would have for sure been quitting my sports before I was turning 22. Um, my first uh, World Cup victory came when I was uh, 25. Um, and uh, I think that's also a bit from what I've been coming into the para sport is that um, even if I meet um, uh, athletes that are maybe yeah, 25, 28, they can still be quite new to the sport depending on uh, yeah, uh, what kind of injury or what they have. But m m I feel that many that I have been talking in para sports around, around uh, Lillehammer also are quite young as an athlete. So as I mentioned, I started basically when I was three years old and I reached the top when I was 25. So if you start at the age of 18 or let's say 30, then you you have, I, I think it's important to have also that patience, to give yourself that patience to, to not, you cannot accept, uh, expect being the world best in, in two, three years. So, uh, I think take time because um, developing and um, yeah, making progress takes time. 
So I think remember that it's always a path to reaching your potential. Um, but as I mentioned, I was my dream goal kept me going. I was never stressed about reaching my goal. But still, I I didn't make um, I did not have my breakthrough until I was 25. And I have some some reflections about me uh, not reaching, let's say, my potential earlier because um, I was very result oriented in everything I did. Um, I had such a big focus on becoming um, the best, um, which in many ways, as I told earlier, was a good thing to keep me going, but in some way it held me back. Um, I was uh, only thinking about results. Um, I defined my development um, and me as a person, depending on results. And I think that was a really big reason for like, uh, yeah, uh, slowing my development. And especially in competitions, this came to play. Um, I underachieved a big uh, parts of my career because I was so focused on results. I got huge nerves. I was really um, nervous before competitions. I, yeah, normal thing was I performed a lot better in, in training than I did in, um, in competitions. And basically I tried too hard. I tried too hard to become, um, to become the best. Um, and uh, I remember also during competitions, I used so much energy. Um, the days leading up to the competitions, uh, on the, especially the day of the competition. Um, and ski jumping being such a mental sport, you have you have 90 kilometers per hour and you have yeah, two tenths of a second to make the perfect movement. So it's a lot to do with mental. And my mental capacity was gone long before I even reach the top of the jump hill, ski jumping hill. So, and it was no fun. It slowly, um, yeah, it, it slowly killed my motivation. I, uh, I was stressed and I didn't have a good balance in my life. Um, I traveled around the world. So for sure, I did have some development during these years. So I traveled around the world in some World Cups from 2008 but um, I traveled around the world being really disappointed all every weekend I was um, I was uh, yeah it, it was not a good um, a good um, period because I was I, I was I, I didn't have a good balance in life I was um, it's slowly starting to eating me up from the inside. Um, I got to Vancouver Olympics. I didn't perform. I didn't perform any any good results. Um, but when I was in Vancouver, I remember asking myself, "Is this something I want to do? I'm at the greatest stage in the world, being in the Olympics, and uh, I'm having a shit time. I was not enjoying myself at all." So I took a stance that if I will, if I am to um, continue this um, journey, I have to start enjoying myself because, um, um, yeah, it was it was tearing me <laughs> apart as a person uh, as well, not only as an athlete, but uh, and that. Uh, so I, I I made a clear statement to myself. Um, I want to enjoy. Uh, I have to get on some lights. <laughs> uh, I have to enjoy enjoy um, my sport and, and my life. So this made me have a total different view over my sports. Uh, I really started um, um, to focus on developing myself and getting more into performance orientation, like 
okay, what uh, the performance starting to get more important for me. So, and that this is also what I told in the beginning that it was about me reaching my own potential. Um, I saw competitions as a development area as much as training. Um, and even if I was 25 years old, I wanted to use competitions to become better. Um, so competitions for me got more normal. Um, I, um, I enjoyed every competition day like any other training day. I was, of course, a bit nervous, but that's no, it's no, it's when the nerve, n nerve, yeah, uh, <laughs> nerves gets um, ahead of you or uh, gets too much, then it's a problem. But uh, I, nerves is good energy. So, but I used the energy or the nerves in a, in a good way. So I actually many times performed better in competitions than I did in, um, um, did in training. So, so that was, um, that was a big step. And, uh, then, um, the year after first competitions we had in uh, Ruka in Kusamo, I was second. I couldn't believe I was <laughs> finally reaching the podium and I was, uh, the next competition in Lillehammer, I was winning. And that year I was second overall in the world cup. So I think I went from a 26th place uh, overall to a second overall. And I think that had a lot to do uh, with what I just uh, told you that I, 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 I only uh, focused on developing my, my own capability. And I, I enjoyed the, the difference from 2009 to 2010 for me, I, it's hard to describe, but I was I was going back to when I was 12. I was enjoying sports for sports, and this was a really big step in my my career. Uh, and this is also uh, well, my workplace is the section of top sports, and uh, here you have a statement from my chief um, that. Um, Chief of Top Sports in Norway. Um, so we want the uh, best athletes um, to be in sports because they want to be. And basically what he's saying is that he wants everybody to win uh, by focusing on not winning. And this comes to, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the development. So. I think that also says a lot about how um, Norway section of top sports um, have their views on on yeah importance of being an athlete and um, what's important to athletes. And then um, the last thing I want to talk about, um, I've touched in on it uh, for sure, uh, but find a balance in sport and everyday life. So I took a statement in um, in uh, for myself in after Vancouver um, that I want to focus on uh, developing myself. But this also means I have to develop myself as a person. Um, so. OK, I, I. I did this reflection, maybe not um, exact what you see here now, but I kind of, okay, what, what is important for me uh, as a person, as a athlete? Um, and I sort of uh, try to make priorities um, from what was important for me. Um, if you look at my priorities in 2009, you can see sports, uh, yeah, it had a, it had um, a big a big part, um, and um, but there was something that was not um, uh, right about this because I was trying to um, to uh, I was trying too hard. Um, 
And the sport part here got too important um, compared to who I am or was as a uh, human being, as a person. Um, and after Vancouver, I, I got a bit more relaxed. Um, I took a lot more time, friends, family. I started to study again. Um, and it looked maybe like this. So I was not less um, serious about my sports. I was not training any less. I was training the same amounts. I trained about 1,000 hours a year. But still, I, I took more time to things outside sports, which was also, I think, important for me to get my mind off sports because I was a person, when I got too much into things, I was using my energy on uh, on um, on also these areas so or, or only if solely on on the sport so um this made me enjoy life in general much more i got much more relaxed i am um, and i performed a lot better so i, I went from i think around 26th or 25th place in um in the World Cup overall to second place. And I think this, what you see here is a big, um, big part to that, uh, what happened there. I also want to mention in, in the end here now that uh, I'm not saying this is right for everybody. I have had teammates who have uh, the sports section on what you see here, maybe 95%. And they are enjoying life the best they can. So this is about finding what's important for you and then do the priorities from what is important to you. Uh, and this can vary for sure. And it's nothing right or wrong. I just, I think it's important to find out what's important for you to be the best that you can be. And also I told you that um, in the beginning after seeing that video, um, that was um, one of the proudest moments of my career. Um, but, um, but I think the real highlights uh, for me when I look back is all the all the friendships and bonds um, I've made to people around the world. I have visited uh, Akito Watabe, a competitor from Japan. I've visited his uh, home, stayed with his family for yeah, one and a half weeks. I've been to the US. Uh, I have friends there. I have friends in France. So, and I, I can tell you, I got a lot more friends after 2010 than I, I did before. Um, so I am proud today, looking back on my career, I got to live out my dream. I have um, great memories from um, all the people and places I visited and um, I also hope that um, that you can um, take something out of uh, what I have been talking about tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much Miko. It's an yeah. um, inspiring story for sure and uh, hopefully you can uh, stay with us throughout this uh, session because we have this um, two new guys coming in now now so maybe i have also some thoughts about um, the next uh, one christian Vestmeier ribera and leandro ribella if you're uh, inside here hopefully you can uh, see your face and uh, unmute yourself hello everyone thanks hello for having me. Good evening. Good evening. And thanks for the opportunity to share a little bit of my history and uh, that got We are very happy, Christian. Do you want to... Um, do we have Leandro there as well? Yes, I'm right here. I will go through with questions with these slides and then afterwards I would just if the uh, somebody have any questions I would just have Christian to translate his answers 
Okay. Can you can you see the yeah. presentation? Yeah, we see the presentation. Perfect. So for for who don't who don't know me, my name is Christian Mr. Meyer Ribeira. I was born in Brazil, Rondônia, with a disability called arthrogryposis. When I was three months, I moved to Sao Paulo, searching for treatment, and I already had 21 surgeries. When I was four, I started practicing swimming to help my treatment. Then, then I got to know other sports, such as wheelchair running, tennis, capoeira, and even did some dancing too. <laughs> At the age 11, I started training to compete in wheelchair running and swimming, where I was often a school champion. And in August 2019, I participated in my first international competition in wheelchair running, and I won two bronze medals at the World Paraplex Junior Championship in Nottingham, Switzerland. And nowadays, I am champion of regional championship, state championship, and I'm fourth and four at Brazilian national ranking. And uh, in 2015, I got to know cross country skiing through a roller ski experience offered by the Brazilian Snow Sports Federation. Well, uh, and my first roller ski competition was in January 2016. When I was invited to experience a new sport, I and they told me it was skiing. I I got super excited because I love skateboarding, and and that there would be a lot of similarities in this sport as a balance, strength, agility, and versatility. In other words, everything I like. And in December of 2016. I saw snow for the first time in a training camp in Sweden, in Idrefihal. My first competition was one year later in Camor, Canada, where I achieved the, cr the criteria to the Paralympic Winter Games 2018. And in Pyeongchang, I achieved the, a sixth place, scoring the best result of a South American in any edition of Winter Paralympic Games. The following season, I got even better results. I'm winning my first international medals, a silver and a bronze in a, in a World Cup Volkert in Finland. It was also the first Brazilian medals in this sport. Uh, most recently, in the past season, I achieved the second place in the World Cup overall ranking, uh, winning two silver medals at the World Cup Finstrol in Germany and getting seven top fives in seven World Cup races that I took part. Uh, how I trained since I was a little boy, that's helping me a lot, mainly the emotional side because I'm learning how to deal with the pressure and execute what I, I was trained to do. So it's a little easier because this. And nowadays I'm training in São Carlos because of coronavirus. And I, tra I, training, I train four times roller skiing, two times weight in the gym, three times wheelchair racing and one time swimming too. And my biggest motivation is to know that my family, friends and coaches are proud of my results and I too, obviously, and make them happy makes me happy too. So I'm always seeking for evolution and improvement to make history. And having, having them, they, it gets a little easier. And since I was was kid, I was young, I was always extremely competitive and never liked to lose. So when I have 
the chance to do something to get better, I grab the opportunity, work hard and search for excellence. And there, I think there is always room for improvement. And I think the secret to 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 be a a good athlete is don't give up your dreams because sometimes it may seem possible, but you can make make it happen. And how and how Nico said, I think the three three key factors for success in my case, I'm I think besides your dedication and commitment, of course, the support for for from family and friends are very important. The work and knowledge of the coach is too is too big important too. And the experience exchanged between we athletes in the environment where they train, they train and compete. So I think it's very important. This was a little bit of my history and I I will try keeping the results and make make the best for be the better I can. Thank you. Leandro? Yeah, um, I don't have much to add. I will uh, help more. Christian asked me to bring some data from his training that we discussed a little bit, how much like an athlete um, with his uh, performance is training nowadays. Maybe that's also interesting for, for some coach. So I just brought some information here for his from his annual training. So um, as you see, well, we, we come from Brazil, so we don't have snow here. And the closest place we go skiing is in Ushuaia in Argentina, what is like 6,000 kilometers from here. So um, skiing is not a big part of our training, but as you can see with Christian results, it can be effective. So 15% of our training is done on snow, uh, with ski training. All the rest is done with other uh, endurance disciplines, in court, uh, including the specific, like with city mountain boarding, um, it's like when you go in the dirt road with the mountain board and uh, the seat ski over it. And also with seat roller skis, as you saw in the pictures, uh, Christian trains quite a lot of wheelchair running um, because he's enjoying it, because it's also good for his training and uh, he, um, yeah, he has a different environment as well. So I think all these uh, motivates, um, it's a good point of motivation in his training and of course strength training. And if you look, this is the, on the right side is only the training done in Brazil. And then um, without this, without this skiing, so it's most of it is done on the seat ski, on the pavement with roller skis. And then comes mountain board on the dirt road, uh, wheelchair running, and also gym sessions. A big part of the training. And Christian is, uh, is training around like 7,000, um, uh, 700 hours per year. That's that's what his his amount of training per year right now. He's very young, 18, so. There is still time to um, uh, to progress through the through the years. So yeah, that's what I had to add in his presentation, and then uh, he's open for questions. And I I I'm here just to translate what he's answered because uh, of the English. He asked me to be around to ask the uh, translate some questions if needed. Thank you so much. Um, I think this is two unique athletes, both Mikko and Christian, in uh, a different way. And I have a question for you, uh, Christian. If you are still there and I can see you. Yes. I'm How do you think more athletes can be motivated to start the sport coming from not typical snow nations and make it uh, successfully to the top? Acho que você pode traduzir, Leandro. Okay. Ele perguntou... Como você, acha como... Que outros, como você acha que outros atletas de nações que não têm tradição na neve podem ser introduzidos no esporte? Hum, como o esporte, né? Ski Cross Country é muito novo no Brasil. É... Cross Country Ski is very... It's still a new sport in Brazil. 
é um pouco mais difícil né, ter conhecimento dos atletas, mas sempre que, que alguém chega, a gente recebe né, de braços abertos para poder estar tá competindo em alto nível com a gente. It's not very easy. Nice. It's not very easy to find like uh, athletes, and not a lot of people know about it. But we try to motivate a lot of people, like when uh, they ask or, like what it is, and so we try to motivate everybody because they might also find it interesting. E, e a gente espera sempre poder manter uma competitividade muito alta, né? E poder estar tá sempre ajudando. Sempre que eu posso, eu tento ajudar. Yeah, and I like to share my, my, my knowledge with other athletes and my experience and yeah, to help them achieve their goals and have more athlete, competitive athletes in Brazil as well. Thank you. I think your way to the top can be inspiring for other athletes, so good luck to also bring new athletes into the sports in Brazil. I see we have Miko here, so um, all the audience there, the coaches or the athletes, it's possible to, um, to have some questions or thoughts about, I see it's a lot of thoughts about uh, both Christian and Miko's uh, presentation. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I don't know if you have something to add, Miko, on what you heard about uh, Christian. Yeah, I... Um... I think it's really. Um, we also had a, a chat yesterday with Leonardo, Leandro and uh, and Christian. So I think it's really inspiring that uh, a Brazilian can become or make the the kind of uh, success that you have done. And uh, I also find it um, um, well interesting. And uh, I think also it's a big strength from you, Christian, that the. Also, when we talked yesterday, um, you're um, eager to develop. Uh, and also, what you say, you can always become better. And uh, it, this was also like important um, from in my career, that I al always had a hunger to improve. Um, and also, like you, you showing up here today, um, having some... Uh, no troubles. You, you you spoke very good, but I know, like we talked yesterday, that you, you take the challenge and you you try to become uh, to become better. And I think it it represents a lot about uh, from the the little I know about you now. Um, I get this feeling that you are very eager to to have um, uh, development in uh, in everything you do. So it's um, I think. Uh, It has been really inspiring to listen to you and also talk to you yesterday. Thanks so much. Mm. Aí pode falar, Leandro. É... Desde criança, né? Eu, eu sempre soube que eu era diferente por, pela minha deficiência. Since I was a kid, I knew I was like a different kid because of my um, disability. Então, depois que eu percebi isso, eu descobri que eu não era melhor ou pior que ninguém. So when I understood it right, I, I, I put in my head that I was not better than worse than anybody else. E tentava sempre ser o mais independente possível. And I was trying to be always very independent. Para ser o melhor de mim. To, to become better and yeah, always improve. Thanks so much. Thank you. It was uh, really good. I um, don't think we have any questions, but there's um, a lot of uh, thoughts there. Thanks for the informative and inspiration, Miko, Christian, and Leandro. Great work, they say. So, thumbs up, I think. Okay, uh, I then I just have. Uh, Yep. I can see some words as well, like uh, we had a chat with Miko yesterday and also I like, I like the balance of this session because like Miko is a very experienced uh, athlete that already went through the whole process and now he's, you know, in the other side and Christian is still facing that moment, like he's 18 years old and then maybe 
it's you know getting closer to the, his um, peak of his career, like in the coming in the coming years. So maybe he doesn't see still like the whole perspective. But what also Miko said, it's important that you're you're happy what, with what you're doing. And Christian, it seems he's really happy. Like he's very 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 competitive in anything he does. And this sometimes even worries me. Like as a coach, yesterday we were discussing a presentation, and when he's like I was reading his. Uh, his presentation, he said, like, you know, I, um, I want to make my family happy, my coach happy, and that makes me happy too. I said, well, but you got to do it because you are happy with, with that, not because you want to make us happy. You know, like, you, you are the main um, player on, the, on this game. But I said, yeah, but uh, I'm happy. Like, that's what I like to do. And then, you know, I said, oh, but don't you want to see something like in the end that maybe even taking that always very serious you always have your fun i said no i want i want people who get this image of me like that you know i that i i work really hard that i try to do the best i can do every day and it's that's who i am I said all right yeah <laughs> it's and so it's it's nice and it seems it's you know that's it's that the character of each person if he's happy like this that's okay but then of course with the the years passing um, and then maybe the motivation also, you know, after doing many, many years, as Miko said, the same thing, maybe the motivation, it's hard to keep up the motivation. So you have to find uh, this balance uh, through the years to, to, to make it like, um, to make it long enough, you know, mm. to, to go through the whole process. Otherwise you can have all social career. But yeah, maybe these are my uh, summary of what I heard from both of them. Yes, of Good. course, I'm very happy with my life, <laughs> with my my training since I was a kid, so I'm I'm very happy with all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Do you have something more, Miko? I don't have anything more. I'm um um was um, uh, inspiring to have uh, the session. Um, I hope um, everybody uh, maybe not learned a little bit, but maybe found some inspiration in what um, both me and Christian was talking about. And um, yeah, um, I wish all all the best and. Um, um, also, I think th these times when um, with the corona situation also, it's, I think, to have the patience and also look a bit uh, forward, I think it's important because, um, yeah, it, it will for sure be a season that is different. So, um, but um, keep on doing the job and maybe, yeah using the year to develop even more um, and preparing for well, well hopefully there will be some some events but it will for sure be different so um, i think that's also important to to find new solutions to the the situation which uh, the legacy center i think does good with having this uh, digital camp so uh, good work per eric and jan christian for sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Christian and uh, Miko, and um, also Leandro for uh, sharing. I think we learned a lot from this uh, session. So once again, a big thank you. Okay, Pererik. Yes. Something big is coming. <laughs> yeah, of course we will jump to the fourth competition. But uh, yeah, again, uh, Christian and Miko, thank you for amazing uh, presentations. So inspiring to here I speak. So yeah, I think this session was a great uh, last day of uh, of this uh, camp. And uh, Elke, are you here as well? We will. Uh, yep, I'm here. We will uh, announce the last uh, winners of the photo competition. And um, yeah, today we will announce two winners. First, uh, the winner of the day. With a, with a photo and um, then the, the photo of the week that uh, get this uh, free, 
free uh, access all uh, costs in Lillehammer Covered for a, hopefully a physical camp here in uh, 2021. So um, I will uh, first um, show you the winning photo of today. I will share my screen. So today we are going to uh, Iran and uh, Ahmed who sent uh, yeah some great uh, great uh, in competition uh, photos. Uh, yeah, don't you agree? No, it's amazing. Um, um, from Iran, it's also what we see great um, efforts going on there uh, with uh, competitions happening, um, new athletes coming. And um, so the, the theme for today was uh, best competition photo. And um, so I believe those pictures are from their national championship. Uh, not sure, last season or the season before. So um, really great and great what is going on. They're so happy that I would send the pictures and won the last day. Agree, agree. And then we will... Um show another picture that uh, actually I think we have seen this picture earlier this week um, but um, yeah this is the winner of the, the big prize today and this week and uh, it's uh, Chloe who is the winner of uh, of the big prize the um, possibility to to attend a camp for free here in uh, Lillehammer again, hopefully in 2021. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think maybe Chloe, are you joining us tonight? Maybe you can. It'd be uh, great to see you. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Ah, thank I'm you for. Mute. Thank you for a great uh, photo, and. Uh, we're looking forward to hopefully see you in uh, in Nilhammer for uh, for the camp next year, a physical camp. And we hope you want to join <laughs> the camp. Yeah, hopefully you want to come. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, my English uh, is not uh, very good. No, no problem. It's um, no, it's great. I think you you were also planning to, to join this year, but yeah, unfortunately with the cancellation, it had to be postponed. So hopefully next year we can see you there and um, together with the, your coach or um, other teammates. So congratulations to that. Congratulations. We'll keep in touch regarding that. Yeah. Uh, should we, yeah, last session, young Christian, should we send this great week up here? Ja, yeah. vi har båt uh, Elke, Anne, Ragnhild, MP, Erik her. Ja, yeah, I'm here for sure, uh, at least, and I think, ja, uh, yeah. Jens uh, from the Norwegian Biathlon Association, I, I don't think he's here, but uh, also a big, uh, big thank you from, on behalf of the Legacy Center for a great cooperation with the Norwegian Ski Federation, Norwegian Biathlon, uh, Association and uh, Elke and IPC for uh, putting this uh, camp uh, together. We are uh, really happy uh, with the, the to be able to work together with you on this uh, project. And thank you to all speakers uh, during the week. And uh, of course, thank you for all athletes, all coaches who have uh, joined us. You're, of course, the most uh, important uh, group here, and we are so happy with the uh, many nations uh, represented, uh, many people. So uh, for us, this is a great start, uh, like Elke mentioned. And I, what I said the first day, we hope to have a physical camp uh, in April. But uh, yeah, this year, I think a digital edition was... Uh, uh, was a good uh, start due to the COVID situation, and we hopefully um, can uh, have this camp physical uh, next year. Um, yeah, so that was some words uh, from uh, my part. Uh, Elke, how have you 
experienced this camp? <laughs> no, it was really great. I think um, like it's always hard to to tell before something starts how it's going to turn out in the end. But I'm really happy, and um, now I want to thank everybody who who joined and took the time to to speak here, um, be available for for this. I think it was really great like today again a great session um so i think that's a really really good way to to end the sem uh, the the online camp um now i'm really amazed how how it went and also uh what a good spread of of participants we had uh from all all around the world um so i'm really looking forward to to be in touch um with you all uh, in the coming months and and years and to work on uh, development and uh, bringing new athletes to the sport um, because we want to grow and uh, make the sport bigger and uh, really big thanks and also to you Per Eric and, and young Christian it's um, you were saying I, I don't know I put the camp together but that's not true it's uh, it was all of us um, really and we put a lot of um, efforts but I think it really was was a good way and also thanks to Anne Rangel representing the Norwegian Ski Federation and uh, Jens from the Norwegian Badlon Association. So teamwork is the key and that really showed uh, what can be done. So no, thanks for everything and I'm really happy. Yeah. Great, okay. I'm not sure, Anne Rangel, are you? I'm online. Connected. Yeah, yeah, you are. Can you hear me? Yeah. It's have been a pleasure to uh, to be a part of this uh, cooperation between uh, both uh, different uh, federations and also Lillehammer Legacy Center. It was a great idea, Per Erik, when you committed for a physical camp first, and uh, also that we get uh, IPC in, inside to cooperate to try to reach as many as we could. And I'm really impressed that so many nations have taken part here. And I'm sure that um, everyone has something to learn from each other. And like the last speaker here, Christian, he was, is an, I think, is a unique athlete, not only because of they had good results, but I have the pleasure to um, talk a little bit with him. Oh, you know, it's dark here. <laughs> Um, uh, last year, because we have a mixed relay team during the World Cup with Nor Norway and Brazil. And uh, we was through the um, tracks together with Christian and Indira, who was were our new young athletes, his first part, take part in the competition. And Christian was really willing to share his experience and show Indira how to take the curves and something. That's really good. And I think that's uh, a cooperation like this will maybe make the sports even more unique when we can cooperate together to develop it. So I hope that we can be able to uh, invite to a physical camp at Lillehammer next year. I hope that no the world will become a little bit more normal. So thanks you to everyone that we have cooperated to organize it and everyone who participate. Great, and I also have to talk, sorry, have to thank uh, Christian for leading us through this week in a great, uh, great way on behalf of uh, all of us. So it was amazing. And uh, I will also ask you to, um, uh, to give us some feedback now after, uh, after the camp. So later today, uh, you will uh, again, uh, get uh, the email with the recording of the session, but I will also add a link to an uh, evaluation form. So we would love to hear your feedback about uh, how this camp was and how, how we can do it even better in the future. So uh, also some uh, development thoughts uh, there. So please, uh, please feel free to, to give us some uh, feedback about uh, this concept and how we should uh, develop uh, the camp in general in the future. So that's right. important. There's something I just want to mention, Perik. Um, the Facebook group, or maybe you were going to, but no, um, we want to keep it alive. So, um, you know, if something comes up or you have questions or um, or maybe it's a development camp in your country and you want to open it up for, for other people, um, you know, just post it there. I think it's a great um, small group that um, can help each other. So 
I'm gonna keep that alive. Sure, and we will also keep you updated regarding uh, the camp next year in uh, both our Instagram account uh, on uh, in the Facebook uh, group for sure. So. Uh, yeah, should I then it over to you, young Christian, so you finish this uh, <laughs> dish off as usual? <laughs> okay, thank you. I think uh, the most is said, but I want to say a big thank you to all the athletes and all the coaches as well. And uh, of course, to the Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center as the host, and also the Norwegian Ski Federation, Norwegian Biathlon Association, and World Para Nordic Skiing. You're the best. This was absolutely fantastic, and I'm uh, really happy that I could um, be here with you. So, um, to everyone, good night and good luck for the upcoming season. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye.